All right, KMR Rotary, welcome back to the channel. We got some brap. Sorry, we've been a little light on the videos lately. I've been traveling a lot with the race team, and we've been working on some amazing projects, so the time has been limited. But I wanted to catch it up with this really cool three-rotor build that we just put together. This is basically a copy of my Formula Drift motors. Now, the motors have evolved over the years, but we're going to go over some of the specs, uh, some of the things that I really focus on to make three rotors reliable, um, under high boost, under high RPM, uh, under extreme competition application. So this particular motor is going into a race car. Um, it's going to be seeing some road race action. So we wanted to make sure that it was going to be strong, reliable, and up to the challenge. Horsepower goals for this particular motor are a little less than my Formula Drift blocks. I think this block aims to achieve around 600, which again, we overbuilt it. Um, fully studded race bearings, we'll go over the specs, but it's overbuilt for that horsepower number and should be able to sustain a long life cycle. And what I would like to see is this motor can be raced for a year or two, you know, one or two seasons, and then it really should come back for a mild service, a little freshen, and then it should be able to go back out for a couple more years or seasons of racing. Provided nothing goes wrong, this should be a motor that takes abuse, can operate at high RPM, high boost, and there shouldn't be anything that's fatiguing or wearing excessively. And we'll talk a little bit about how we build these Cosmo three rotor blocks um, to eliminate some of the fatigue and stresses that they have. Now, one of the first things you'll notice is, is this is a high horsepower build, but it's not really one of the late model castings. And I think that's always of concern for a lot of people. Um, what we've done to strengthen this block is we've run studs all the way through the block, front to back, and we've got a few that just go to the front plate as well. They're all half inch hardened steel, um, ARP hardware. And basically what this is doing is because these are modular motors and they have a tendency to twist, the factory tension bolts are smaller. They don't add any rigidity to the block. So when we stud these blocks, it's a lot like what used to be done in the form of doweling. But what we have found is we're able to leave more material around the studs because of their size and specification. And by doing more of them, basically all of the tension bolt holes around the block, we're able to lock the motor into place. And so you don't have such a modular feeling motor as the motor spins, as it fires, as it boosts. You can kind of think of how each rotor housing, one, two, three, is expanding and twisting at different rates. Well, basically, by studying it, having proper machining done, you're able to lock the motor down so it doesn't put that same load on the OE dowel pins anymore. It's actually loading all the studs, and they're loading each other as it's firing. So you have something that's becoming more of a stressed member design, uh, like what they do in aviation application. This motor in the back can't twist because it's tied to the front and the front is tied to the back and the middle and so forth. It really strengthens the block. Um, it's my preference over the original uh, dowel pinning, which I still see, I still do, it's, it's great, but I just feel with my Formula Drift experience, the drag racing we did at Mazda Tricks, and uh, what we've seen in the past 10 years is basically that studs are more reliable and stronger. Now this is a fully dry sumped motor. Oiling's always a concern on three rotors, especially when you're spinning them to 10,000 RPM and you're running boost. So we were able to track down one of the factory dry sump systems and this is actually the 20 millimeter front. So it's got the bigger gear on the front end, which is a little more suitable for a three rotor design. And then we went full race bearings on all three rotors, factory competition bearings. And then we went with the OE multi window front and rear but we polished those out and basically set them to race tolerances. And then you don't have a lot of options with your factory center main bearing. So same thing, we gave it a slight hone and polish. So basically we're up to race tolerances. And you know, when you think about it, race motors generally don't get a lot of break in time. They, they end up going right on dynos, right out to the track. So per my own experience with my own race cars, with Mazda tricks, we kind of open up the bearings just slightly, give them a polish so they're a little more ready to go right to the track. 
Um, obviously, race motors aren't going 100,000 miles. And again, I mentioned, you know, a yearly or every two season service. But essentially, rotaries are pretty mild on bearing wear, provided your oiling and system is working properly. You're getting good pressure throughout the motor. You don't have any over revs or pre pressure drops. Um, you know, generally rotaries aren't a bearing failure motor or the bearings are not the failure point of a rotary motor. So obviously we've done everything to race specs. We've got one of the factory racing front covers, full dry sump. The motor can be put really close to the subframe mounting location at that point. So we're getting our center of gravity down on the motor as well. And you're eliminating possible slosh issues because the dry sumps are a dual stage pickup or a dual point pickup. Um, and so they're picking up from the front of the motor and the back of the motor. So you're able to get proper motor excavation, evacuation of oil under acceleration and under heavy braking. So really like the dry sumps, whether you're running banked tracks, road racing, drifting, drag racing, they're hard to come by. If you're looking for one, hit me up. We might know where a couple are, but they're just absolutely amazing. Now, moving on from the bearings, we polished the eccentric shaft. It got a micro polish. The rotors themselves are the factory uh, 20B rotors, so they're a very close rotor split. Everything's within, I believe, four grams. And then it went out for high-speed balancing at Mazda Tricks, and we also did side cutting and narrowing of the rotors. So the rotors have more clearance for high, high RPM, high boost as the shaft and motor moves, and the motor, the motor, the, the rotor moves around. It's the morning. I'm working on this, and uh, basically the side cutting polishing of the shaft um, and high speed balancing makes it to where under that high RPM, high boost, you're not worried about the tip of the rotor coming in contact with the side plate. And this can cause pinching of the corner seal, pinching of the side seal. Um, it can look like an over rev. It can look like excessive wear. So it can cut the lifespan and compression life of the motor down. Uh, but it's really more about allowing the seals and rotor to have proper clearances. Obviously, the Cosmo motors were boosted from the factory and they ran decent RPM. But when you're talking about 10,000 RPM, 600 to 1,000 horsepower, things start to move around a lot more. So we have to clearance everything for that opportunity. It's got to move. When it came down to porting, I think obviously semi-peripherals, bridges are extremely popular right now but the customer wanted a very drivable, broad power band. And just like what we've done in Formula Drift, we've really optimized our street port setup. Um, I, I've got it taped up so you don't get to see the porting, but it's the same porting I've showed in other videos. It's KMR and Mazda Tricks developed. It can make upwards of 800, 900 horsepower without nitrous on a three rotor. And it's got a great mid range, basically the power peak, depending on turbo sizing, obviously and in intake manifolding designs, usually hovers around eight to 9,000 RPM. So you end up with a rotary motor that's got a really nice drivable power band with a little drop off at the top. So you can kind of sh choose your shift points and use the drivability of the motor optimally as where when you end up with a motor that's peaking at 10,000 RPM at your shift point, it means you're always trying to just really keep it in that high RPM area. This one's going to have a nice broad power band that the driver and owner can play with. Um, I think that's the majority of it. Nice fat street port, a lot of new components. Basically everything's fresh, OEM parts, new side seals, corner seals, springs, all of that awesomeness. Uh, we got that from Mazda Tricks. It's got a couple new side plates in it. Although obviously the center plate, the shaft came out of a used motor with really low miles. So it was really nice stuff. Um, especially being that it's an early code, basically no code or A code. Um, but like I said, there's no issue with those blocks. You give them a nice studding and uh, they're ready to do a thousand horsepower without any issues. Um, we did do some cleanup on it. You know, we moved, we removed some of the water passages, just a little bit of uh, tapping. Uh, that way, if you ever need the water passages, we can get them back. But uh, most of the time in race motors, cleanliness is close to being fast. So we got to cut that weight down, make it look good, have it ready to rock. Uh, we went to a Racing Beat dual, uh, dual front pulley. There's not a lot of options when it comes to timing on these dry sump front covers, and you can't really get the ones with the distributor holes anymore. Um, so this is going to end up with, I believe, a full function engineering front reluctor and pickup. They're really nice. Um, we did plug our oil metering 
uh, passages. And these are some nice little Mazda tricks, plugs, keeps everything neat and tidy. I know, don't tell me my tape is ugly. I'm just keeping the dirt out. I think the video cut, so quick summary on this one. A lot of beautiful brand new parts, OE parts, E&J seals, race bearings, uh, factory dry sump, street port and polish. Uh, just a really nice build, fully studded, ready to go racing. And then we stripped off a lot of the exterior that's unnecessary. So it basically just cleans it up, makes it show and go ready. KMR built, a lot of Mazda Tricks parts, even some racing beat parts, factory Mazda speed. Thanks everybody for watching. I'm sure I didn't cover everything. It's early morning. We got to ship this thing out. So I think uh, that's a wrap. I hope to have a bunch of more videos coming up soon. Um, we've just been super busy with the race season and uh, getting some of these awesome projects out. So I appreciate